Hello everyone. So, try to contain your excitement. This day is finally here. It's time to start planning our purge for 2020. And I'm going to walk you through all of the small steps that you need to complete in order to thoroughly plan your purge. And um, I'll probably create a cheat sheet. I've not done that yet for this um, lesson, but or this step in the process, however you want to look at it. It's a lesson. We're learning, right? Right, right. Okay. So um, let's just dive right in. Um, and so, yeah, I highly recommend taking notes. So grab your pen, grab your paper, grab a snack, if that'll help keep you motivated. Um, and feel free to use the notes that I include on the screen as a guide, but also add more detail um, if you need to, uh, like do whatever you need to do to help you remember the key points of each of these steps. Um, so, okay, let's jump right in. The whole idea behind creating a plan is you want to have a framework um, so creating a plan obviously allows you to visualize the process a little better, but in addition to that, you'll have something to fall back on if you get stuck. It, um, gives you kind of these benchmarks. I'm trying to make an example that makes sense. Let's say you're trying, you're, you're like trying on, you're not good at walking in heels. Um, and you're trying to walk in this new pair of shoes and you just want to make it from your doorstep to the mailbox without falling. So the mailbox is that benchmark that you can look at and keep yourself motivated. And it's also kind of a point where you can pause, um, you know, like in case you really need to rest, because obviously you got to get back inside the house. Um, granted, you could take the shoes off, but no, you're trying to learn. So you want to wear the shoes back to the house, right? Um, so planning will help you create these sort of points where you can rest, where you can assess yourself where you can kind of motivate yourself and see how much you've completed already. Um, the reason for creating a plan is multifaceted. So don't think of creating a plan as just a waste of time, an unnecessary step. It's going to help you in the long run. Um, and it really does kick in in those days when you're in the trenches and you feel like there's no end in sight, but then you can look down at your plan and see that you've accomplished step one and two with um sub points a through d um and you only have step three left to go that's a lot more motivating than just looking around and seeing a bunch of stuff and not really knowing how long it's going to take you to finish purging everything and making everything look nice so um that's why we create a plan let's get into how we do that so um there are some things I want you to think about when you're creating your plan. For example, um, number one, when uh, developing your plan is um, when will you purge? So that's question number one. You can make it like Roman numeral number one if you're doing an outline. Um, and that sounds like a literal question on its face, but I want you to unpack everything I go over in this video. So when will you purge? I want to know what days of the week, what times of day, how often, obviously what days of, of the week, you know, is how often kind of, but also like list the weekdays. Um, we want to leave no room for ambiguity, no room to get confused, nothing to look back on and say, well, I'm not sure what to do, so I'm going to go have a snack and never return to this. We want it to be as clear and concise as possible so that we always know what to do. We always have a compass to look at. And um, that's what this plan is going to be. So um, think about when you will purge. And to delve a little bit deeper into that, um, think about your energy level. And so this is kind of like a, a it's below even a sub point. It's kind of an aside which I will actually send you more info on this that I'm about to get into. Just comment below if you'd like more info on something called the Pomodoro method, which you can Google too, but you know, like maybe you'll have questions. Um, so if you don't know your attention span or your energy level, I recommend trying out the Pomodoro method, which is where um, for like whatever tasks you're trying to get done throughout the day, whether it's housework, whether you're working at an office, 
whether you're planting in your garden, whether you are um, vacuuming, just like mundane tasks, I want you to work on them in 20 minute intervals. So um, basically you would set a stopwatch. Everybody's phone has a stopwatch nowadays. Um, set a stopwatch, an alarm, whatever for 20 minutes. Set your alarm for 20 minutes. And then after the alarm goes off, you are to take a two to five minute break. So what, oh, okay. Obviously you're working during the 20 minute interval. So during each 20 minute interval, work on whatever task, identify the task ahead of time. So if you're sitting down to, um, cut, cut coupons, or if you're like cleaning up the kids room or whatever you have to do throughout the day, just try to work on it in 20 minute intervals. You really only need like two or three, I think maybe like four to figure out the point where you burn out and you start to lose focus. So if that 20 minute interval is difficult for you the first time, I want you to break it down to 15 and try it again. And in between intervals, you're probably wondering, what do I do when the alarm goes off? That's when you take a break. So set your alarm again after the 20 minutes expire for two minutes, five minutes, depending on what kind of break you want to take, no more than five minutes. And during those breaks, that's when you get up and walk around. Maybe you make a quick phone. No, maybe you don't make a phone call because you might call someone that'll like keep you on the phone for an hour. Don't do that unless it's like confirming your appointment for Thursday at the doctor's office or something. But you do quick things. You get a snack. You get some water. You just like stretch your muscles. You might like, you know, rest your eyes, like look off into the distance to kind of um, um, give your eyes a break from looking at the screen, whatever the case may be. Um, rest for those two to five minutes. And then at the end, once that timer goes off, hit another 20 minute interval. Or if that 20 minutes was really difficult for you, try to do 15. Um, and I'm hoping that everyone will be able to do 15. If you can't do 15, try 10 minute intervals. Um, no less than 10 guys. So, um, what we're doing with this is kind of testing our focus and how long we can work without feeling fatigued. So if you can do those 20 minutes, you're probably a person who can do an hour's worth of organizing um, and take those breaks because the breaks are going to renew you in between the work sessions, the mini sessions, the intervals, whatever you want to call them. So you could probably do an hour, two hours a day, maybe more than that. Um, if you've never purged before, I would try like, no more than four hours a day. Um, but you know, if it's a weekday, I would just do two maybe and really focus during those 20 minutes, no breaks, no nothing. Just like make sure you're completing your task because you know, you're going to have a break at the end of those 20 minutes. So that kind of keeps you going. Um, that's an aside to kind of help you figure out how to plan, um, the time, like how long you want to work each day. So if you're a person who can do 10 minute intervals, um, maybe you can knock out like three 10 minute intervals a day, but you're going to have to work more frequently. You are going to have to purge every day, at least like five days a week. Um, yeah, at least five days a week, like try to do three, four intervals a day. Um, it's close to an hour as you can get. Um, but different people experience fatigue at different levels because some of us are working with anxiety when we try to organize. Um, so keep that in mind and just like see what interval works for you. And if you're a longer interval person, chances are you can knock out like an hour or two without getting too tired or too overwhelmed. If you're a shorter interval interval person, try to include a few intervals in one day consecutively. Try to do it consecutively. Or, you know what, if you're a 10 minute person, maybe you can do like early in the morning, a few 10 minute intervals, and then, you know, in the evening, a few 10 minute intervals, that way you'll have, um, and you'll have an hour total. Um, but if you can't do that, you're really going to have to like, um, get some pep in your step and you're going to be working probably more frequently than most people. Um, so just figure out your balance. Again, if that doesn't make sense, if you have questions, please comment. Um, if you want to do like, um, I don't know. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Um, let me know if you have questions. Um, so that is part of the win. So for when, just a brief recap, I want to know, um, 
put your, you know, ideally we're all starting together. So like it's kind of optional, but put your start date for the purge. It should be immediately, you know, you can put today as your start date. Um, and I want you to put your deadline. That's important. You need to know your beginning point and your end point. Think of a GPS. Um, you need to know where the trip ends. So, um, put today's date. If you're starting today, put your, um, you know, your deadline. And then as far as like the intervals go, look at how much you're able to work within, um, a day, you know, like your level of focus and, um, decide how long you'd like to work. And then, you know, based on how much stuff you have. So that's something you'll, you're going to have to be honest with yourself about. So, you know, if you live in like a seven bedroom house and you, um, every room is filled to the, the brim, the brink, the ceiling with stuff, you're probably going to have to work longer hours than other people. You're probably going to have to take like a half day on Saturday or something. Um, you might even need to call in some help, but, um, most of you probably aren't in that situation. Most of you have like manageable homes, or if you do have very large homes, they're not like literally filled from floor to ceiling. Um, but yeah. And if that is the case and it's just you, then feel free to make this like a one month purge or like six weeks or however long you need only in very extreme cases. You should be able to do this within three weeks. Um, you know, average sized home with average level of, um, you know, like density as far as like how dense, densely packed things are in your closets and, you know, your house. So, um, that's that. Basically, you want to um, figure out a schedule. That's what we're getting to. So like, um, if you decide that you only want to purge on Mondays and Wednesdays, and you'd want to do four hours um, on Monday, four hours on Wednesday, from that point, I want you to break down your starting point and your finishing point. Um, so to do that, you're going to have to think about what time is the best time for you to purge. You know, if you have kids running around, maybe it might be late at night when they're asleep. Maybe you wake up early and do it in the morning. Maybe you're splitting that time, those four hours, knocking out two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. I want you to put down exact time. So like 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., you're going to do the morning purge session. And then from like 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., you do the evening. It could be a midday thing, like if you work from home or if you're a stay-at-home mom, um or, you know, like a homemaker or whatever. Um, maybe you'll do like, maybe you'll do an hour at lunchtime, eat lunch, don't skip your lunch, but you know, um, maybe you do like an hour before your husband comes home or whatever. Think about what works for you. Think about, um, the time that you can kind of like get in your zone and carve it out. Um, okay. Now to that end, I actually do have a course on improving your time management as well. So let me know if you need help in that arena. And I've got some cheat sheets and things that can probably help you as far as like managing your time better and figuring out a schedule, like how to make a schedule. Um, but that's like an aside. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, ideally, hopefully we can all carve out time on our, um, you know, our calendar to, to do this. If not, don't feel bad. There's help. Just let me know. Um, so yeah, once you've got those times figured out, write them down on your calendar. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to have to do a workshop worksheet for this that that's going to have to be, but write it down on your worksheet and then write it down on your actual calendar that you use every day that you look at every day that you're going to start looking at every day. If you don't look at it every day, cause I'm going to remind you every day. Um, but the point is to make it real by writing it down, scheduling it like a doctor's appointment, like a hair appointment. Make this real because your quality of life is important. It shouldn't take a back seat to everything else. It's just your home and the ambiance and um, the livability and um, your ability to be comfortable there, your family to be comfortable there. That is as important as going to a dentist appointment because like you're there every day um, and it affects your productivity. It affects your mood. It affects how you feel each day. Um, so it's important. Write it down as if it's important. Um, end rant. So that I think, let me check these notes here. 
that pretty much covers um do 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 um unsure modify oh i'm gonna throw that in and then we're gonna be done with when don't get overwhelmed with this guys so just try to find something that works if you need to modify it, now let me, okay, if you need to modify it, we can. Nothing is written in stone. But what we're not going to do is change our, our schedule every week. Um, I mean, unless you like plan it. I always say like, if it's planned a week in advance, okay. You know, for example, like if you know that like, um, I don't know, the 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 prince of your village back home is visiting you next Wednesday so you can't stick to your Monday Wednesday schedule it's okay because you know in advance and you can move that Wednesday to like a Friday or a Thursday or whatever only in extreme cases um so this is adjustable it's adaptable but let's not get in the habit of like constantly moving the goal post where it's like eh, I don't feel like doing it Monday um I'm gonna do it Tuesday instead no we're writing it down we're sticking to it so um don't freak out about it because if you need legitimately to make a change, you can, but don't take this lightly. Um, like take it seriously. It's an appointment, you know, like it's a hassle to cancel and reschedule an appointment. So treat it with that level of, um, care and urgency. That's all I ask. So, um, it's one of the things I ask. Let me not lie to you. I ask a lot. Um, so, um, a little bit high maintenance, but it's part of my charm. So anyway, <laughs> um, so that's when, um, basically you're gonna create a calendar, a schedule. All right. So, um, we are going to move on to part two of your plan, which is what will you need? And this is the fun part because we get to spoil ourselves like big babies and do whatever we need to do to be comfortable to do this purge. So, okay, let's get, let's start, start out serious and then work to the fun stuff. So think about the materials you'll need. You will need, you, yeah, you're probably going to need some trash bags or something. I know I will for mine. Um, cause I'm going to be donating. Yeah. You'll need trash bags if you're going to donate or we're getting rid of stuff. So you'll need trash bags probably. Um, Organizing bins for the things that you want to reorganize in your home. If you don't have bins, um, you know, once you get rid of stuff, there may be ways to reuse what you already have, or you can um, position things nicely on the shelves. There are ways of doing that. And if you want, if you need help, like with making your shelves and closets just look nice without much of a big investment, comment, obviously comment below. I can help you with that as well. Um, just let me know what you guys need. Um, and I will do a cheat sheet or a video or a worksheet or an, um, ideas list with Amazon. So you guys can, um, get what you need basically. So, um, yeah, just think in terms of like materials, you may need, um, organizing bins. What else might you need? Um, trash bags, maybe some cleaning supplies. Um, uh, if you, yeah. So like if you were going to be like freeing up a closet space or whatever, but you can, I would like, you could clean as you go, or you can wait till after you're done to do like a, just like a full cleaning. Um, I'm in New York, so that's kind of like a thing. A lot of people have cleaning services and housekeepers and things up here. So they'll just like schedule it around that. Um, or other people who don't do that, they generally like, they might like clean dust and stuff as they go. Totally up to you. Basically, you know what you need to get this done. If you've got questions, feel free to ask because I don't know your individual situations and you're all in different parts of the country, which makes a difference because um, your homes are different. So um, just like let me know if you've got questions about what you might need because I, I, I'm not a mind reader. I just realized that as I um, talked through this, but generally you'll just need like some trash bags and some bins to organize things. And even that can be optional. Oh, so hangers, um, maybe I highly recommend switching over from wire hangers to the velvet hangers. If that's something you want to do to a save space in your closet, B make it look pretty. Um, 
yeah, like that's one of those things you want to put on your list. You want your closet to look nice. So maybe you want to switch to wire hangers. Maybe your closet is kind of dense and you have a lot of stuff you need to keep. So you want to use like the cascading hangers or the pants hangers where you can hang multiple things on them. Um, so just think in terms of that. Um, maybe you need more skirt hangers. Maybe you need a shoe rack to organize your shoes. Um, things like that. Maybe you need a scarf organizer. Maybe you need a hat rack. Um, if you don't know of a tool to help you accomplish what you need to do in your closets and whatnot, let me know. Just say like, hey, I don't know how to organize boots. How would you recommend I, you know, like store my boots or my, um, I have like 50 million coats because there's 50 million people living in my house. What would you recommend? You know, whatever. Like, again, ask questions, please. They're encouraged. Um, so now the fun part of the what you're going to think about what you'll need to make yourself want to keep doing, um, this whole challenge purge thing and see it through. So that means we have to create a fun environment. We have to create an energizing environment. I highly recommend diffusing essential oils. And I actually do have a cheat sheet on essential oils that are good for focus, that are good for making you feel energized, um, that are good for kind of like calming your mind if you have anxiety. So that's something a lot of my clients have started doing and they find it really, really helpful. Um, uh, because like you wouldn't think the way, the way a place smells could impact your whole mood and like, kind of like calm your mind, but it, it really can. Um, so think about smells, think about sounds, think about music. A lot of people can't work without music. So, and with that, I want you to think about music. Like if you need something, we don't all work well to uplifting up. I mean, to upbeat music. So like, I mean, if that's what you need, like a gym type of, um, of, um, playlist where everything is high energy to kind of keep you up, do that. Um, don't get something where like, you'll be too busy twerking to finish purging. If you can twerk and purge, that's good. We can do that. But if you need to like pause every few minutes to drop it like it's hot or whatever, and then, you know, you find yourself, yeah, like, um, use music that will sort of, that will encourage your, um, objective, <laughs> And for some of you, that might be like some old school stuff. It might be if you have anxiety, you might like music that is a little bit more relaxing, but won't put you to sleep. It might be like um, some easy listening type slow jam type stuff. Um, whatever the case may be, I want you to not only pinpoint the genre of music, I want you to put together a playlist. I want to know what's going to be on your playlist. And feel free to post this stuff in the comments too. It'll it'll be fun to see what some of you are coming up with. Um, so post your playlist or what have you. Um, comment with your favorite type of music that helps you stay motivated. You guys can get ideas from each other um, for this part. Think about like during... So I the Pomodoro method is very good for purging. Um, because taking breaks is important, but we want to be sure that we don't take breaks that we never like return from. So, um, if you're going to be doing the Pomodoro method during your purge, which I highly recommend because it'll remind you to pause and not like work yourself to death. Um, but it'll also remind you to come back from your break because there's timers involved. <laughs> um, you know, during your, your five minute break, you might want to snack. Think about what snacks keep you energized and, um, you know, kind of enhance the purpose. Do you need coffee? Do you need tea? Do you need, like, is there a soda? I don't condone soda, but if that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge for now. Um, is, is there a soda that will kind of keep you motivated? You know, you can tell yourself if I get through, you know, these it, on my third 20 minute interval, I'm going to treat myself to like a Mountain Dew or whatever you need. Um, or Diet Coke, that stuff is addictive, <laughs> whatever you're into, hopefully it's not like crack or something, but I mean, if it is, we can address that at another <laughs> junction. Um, 
whatever keeps you motivated, treat yourself to things. And I want you to write this down in your plan so you'll remember to get these things, have your snacks, have your, your music, have your room set up and ready. Um, and so you're looking forward to it. You're like, yeah, I'm going to listen to my music. Maybe we'll do a live or something. Um, or maybe, you know, like I'll, if you want me to create those playlists, maybe I'll create a playlist that you can run in the background, like whatever, whatever helps. So, um, yeah, um, put all that stuff together and write it down in the what you will need section. Um, I'm just going to look over this really quick. Um, yeah. Oh, we're almost done. All right. So that concludes the what you will need section. And number three, I'm keeping it easy for you. Three easy points. So just to review point number one is, um, <laughs> I just, yeah. Okay. Point number one is when will you purge? That's where you're going to pick your days of the week. You're going to pick your times of day. You're going to think about your, how long you can work at a time. So that's where your intervals are going to come in. If you're not sure of your energy level, you can try the pom Pomodoro method, just like throughout the day as you're doing things, you know, like your tasks or whatever, um, for your household or for work or for whatever, um, you need to do. Um, and after when we're going to think about, oh, also under when put your start date, which is probably going to be today. If you're following along, put your end date, which is your deadline. Um, and, um, I didn't throw this in cause I'm going to come back to it, but like for your deadline, it's all, you should also think about like scheduling donation pickups and things like that. I'll come back to you in the next video. Um, cause the way I'm doing mine, I schedule for Salvation Army to come on the 21st. Um, <laughs> which is basically why this ends the 21st. But, um, you know, that's a good thing to do because it'll push you to be ready by that date. But we're going to talk more about that um, in the next video. So that was all under when, point one, when will I purge? Um, point two, what will I need? So that's where we um, write down our practical needs for like, you know, like our logistical needs, trash bags, um, organizing bins, clothes hangers, maybe we need a dust mop, like a Swiffer. Um, maybe we need, um, oh, you know what? Things like twisty ties and rubber bands to keep things together. You know, like if you've got straws in your kitchen drawer and you want to keep them together or plastic bags come in handy. Um, just like think about your supplies, put your supply list down there, um, under what you will need. Other half of what you'll need is the fun stuff to make you keep you peppy and energetic, keep you comfortable. Let me know if there's anything I can do. You guys want to go live. You guys want to, um, you want me to do some playlists that you can just play on your own time. Um, let me know. Let me know. Um, and motivational tools like music, essential oils to make your room smell good, whatever the case may be. Um, and then the final point that I'm going to go over right now, point number three, create an exit strategy. So actually, you know what? I lied. So that thing about scheduling the recycling, that's going to be in this video video because it's point number three. Um, you need. Oh, although I made a note to create, you know, what? I'll I'll touch on it. And then I'm probably going to need to do a more in-depth video on this because um, there are a million bajillion ways to eliminate stuff from your home after you've purged it because you don't want to just like put your stuff in boxes or like bags and then just like let them sit and never like leave um they gotta go okay so that's what we're gonna do in step number three what we're gonna write down is our strategy I want to know if you are let me know what you plan to throw away in general or you don't have to get that specific right now but just you know I plan to throw things away in, you know, like set it out on the curb and the trash people will pick it up. Be very specific. Remember that. So some of my stuff that I no longer need, if it's broken, if it's, um, you know, if it's not like donatable or whatever, if it's just like something, if it's just like pure trash, I'm going to set it out on the curb. That's one throwing things away. So number two, um, you can recycle. So a lot of places have, 
curbside recycling. So if you have a recycling day, think about what you can recycle. Your community might have a day for electronics to be recycled. Look into that and write it down in step number three, um, which is, you know, your exit strategy. So um, throwing things in the trash, recycling, whether it is taking it to a recycling center, whether it's setting it out on the curb so your community recycling truck can pick it up, whether it's... Um, you know, putting it in like a recycle bin if you've got those things like at the store around the corner or whatever the case may be. Although there's a little bit of controversy about those things, but I didn't really... The, the controversy, to me, it's not that big of a deal, but I guess I'll run it by you um, in another video. Um, but yeah, so if you're not going to recycle, obviously there's donating, or maybe not obviously, but donating is the third option. So Goodwill, Salvation Army, churches, um, nonprofits, books. If you're purging books, there are a lot of things where you can send books to people overseas, to soldiers, to people in Africa. Um, there, I don't know if anyone, well, maybe, so maybe you've had like a medical condition. There are I'm pretty sure nonprofits that take like medical supplies that you want to get rid of, medical equipment, things like that. Um, comment below if you have something strange and you're looking for ideas on how to get it out of your house. I can help you with that. Know that I am also going to put together a cheat sheet and I'm probably going to do like a little video um, to talk about different ways you can um, get things out of your home through donation, through recycling. Obviously, you know how to throw things in the trash, I hope. Um, but, you know, maybe you want to know, maybe you're in a situation where you need to call, like, people who collect, quote unquote, junk, you know, like you just put a bunch of stuff together and they come and pick it up. Um, they're, oh, selling. So number four, you can sell some of your valuable stuff. You can, um, or all of it if you want to, whatever. Um, start over fresh. Um, along those lines, there are also these types of people. They, I'm not going to, I was going to say they tend to be strange people, but no offense if any of you are these people out there, but there are people that collect things to sell on eBay, or they might take all your stuff off your hands and take it to a pawn shop or, you know, do whatever they want to do with it. There are people like that that you can find on, don't be freaked out, but Craigslist, there are also people in Facebook groups that you can find. There are people who have like a professionally have like a website. Um, so um, we can talk more about that too. There are people that just, now there are people who, I don't know if I'd recommend this, but people who will pick up your stuff and sell it for you and then pay you, like they'll take their fee out of it. And there are people who just pick up the stuff to take it off your hands and they, you know, what they're going to do in their own time is resell it and keep the money for themselves. Um, so that's your exit strategy. That's number three. This has cut into a second video. Um, mm, actually, it's fine. I can join this video together for YouTube purposes. And for Instagram, it's okay that it's in separate videos because I can only do two, 10, minutes in, 10 minute increments anyway. So um, guys, that wraps up this video. Um, I know that was a bit kind of like talky. I want to make this comfortable and conversational, but I also want it to be structured um, so don't fret. I am going to, um, do, you know, like little study guides and cheat sheets. Let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see on a cheat sheet to make it like very targeted to what you need, or if you've got specific questions. Um, but yeah, don't panic if like the, the notes through this, you know, the notes that I'm putting throughout this video aren't enough. Um, I will go back and do something that you can kind of like print out and keep at home. But no, still take notes, take your notes because it's going to make a difference. When you write stuff down, you process it and understand it better. Also, my cheat sheet isn't going to like, I don't know what I'm saying that resonates with you. So you need to write down the things that um, really click for you. Um, and my cheat sheet will be just kind of like an outline or something just to like, thinking prompts, like a, a summary outline um, so that you can kind of like refresh yourself and make notes on it or whatever you want to do. Um, for the next one, maybe I'll make the, the outline available early. That wasn't really possible. I mean, it was possible, but like I felt like I needed to kind of talk through this more and get to know like some of your questions. 
um, so I can tailor things a little better as we go. Um, cause I don't want to make an outline and then like, um, I don't know, or I could do that. I honestly, to be honest, I really wasn't feeling making an outline right now and I have pretty good instincts. So I think I'm doing the right thing by not making this one outline up front and just like presenting the lesson to you first. Um, and then you guys can tell me like, you know, what, if you have specific questions, things that can kind of help you remember, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's that. So on that note, that is the end of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, very excited. Looking forward to hearing your personal challenges, your personal, you know, what excites you about this purge. Let me know. Um, and of course, as always, like things that can help you along the way. Um, so yeah, on this note, on that note, I'm going to end this video. So you guys take care, be well. I'll see you in the video. The ne Ooh, I'll see you in the next video. It's late. I'll see you in the next video. So till then, take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye now.